Kevin. Uh, what are we doing today, Kevin? Today we're going to teach you how to do a slurry test. I am asked multiple times a day to diagnose issues in a garden. And the number one thing that I ask everybody to do is to perform a slurry test. Uh, this needs to be done 24 hours after the last feed at minimum. So what we've done is we have collected, um, in this case, an ounce of soil from the second to third inch down in that pot that had the plant that wasn't looking so good. So we're going to add an ounce of this soil to an ounce of water. Now, it's the ratio that matters, one to one. Um, if you're using a cup of soil, make sure that you're using a cup of water. Um, it's, it's all about that ratio. We're going to start stirring this up. So what if I have a cocoa fiber grow? Like, can I still do it the same way you're doing it? Absolutely. Cocoa can be done the same way. Peat moss, um, any type of, you know, soil grow or cocoa fiber grow. Um, obviously, this isn't going to work so well for DWC because you really don't have a medium to test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this up really well. Um, it is called the slurry test after all. And I'm going to let this sit for about two minutes. Uh, why two minutes? Two minutes um, for this size pot is about how long it's going to take for that water to run through the medium, to saturate, to start running out the bottom. So two, we're, we're trying to replicate the same conditions in that top two to three inches of that pot um, that the plant is growing in. So that's why we say, you know, two minutes, um, because that's about how long it's going to take for that water to run through there. So I'm going to stir this up real well, let it sit for a moment. Um, by the, by the time I start getting my meters out, um, we'll be about that two minute mark. And it doesn't matter what kind of water I use, right? Like if I have a can of LaCroix laying around, I can just... I, I love LaCroix. Um, don't use it uh, for a slurry test unless you're using LaCroix for your garden. Um, the whole idea is to use that exact same water source. If you're using RO water in your garden, use RO water for your slurry test. If you're letting tap water sit out for 24 hours, um, for your garden, make sure that you do the same thing for this slurry test. So I grabbed my Blue Lab pH pen here. Um, we'll also be using a Blue Lab truncheon to measure the PPMs. Blue Lab is really the only meters that I use for both measuring P pH and PPMs, or what some people call EC. It's all the same stuff. So I've turned it on. I have my check mark. I know that everything is calibrated. Um, if your pen isn't calibrated, um, that data is only going to mess with you all the more. So exactly. we're going to get this in there, get one little final stir, get this in there, and start seeing what kind of a reading we have here so we can figure out exactly what's wrong with this plant in the garden. This is exciting. So you can see this is creeping up a little bit higher than we want it to be. We're already at 7.2. Um, with a Nectar for the Gods um, line, Calcium phosphate base, we really want to be in that mid sixes, you know, or like six, two, six, seven, maybe for the top. Once you start getting above seven, those nutrients are just no longer bioavailable. The, the stomata on the roots, which are the tiny pores on the roots at that point, have closed. Um, so they're not really going to be taking up any nutrients. So already seeing this reading at 7.2, we know that we've already figured out, uh, we're already we figured out already that there's at least one issue in this garden because 7.2 is way too high. So we're going to get that meter back in some water here so it's taken care of. And we're going to ch check the PPMs as well. Parts per million. So we are looking at up around 600, which makes sense because this garden has been continually being fed. Um, with a pH that's out of whack. So what's going on? Like I said, those nutrients are no longer bioavailable to the plant. So they're really just building up within the soil. So we know that we have two issues. Uh, pH is too high. PPMs are too high because we want to be in that three to 500 range. That tells us that the plants are eating what's in there. Um, at this point, that those nutrients are just building up. So we're going to have to do a flush. We need to correct that pH issue. And we need to start getting some of those excess nutrients out of there so we can turn this garden around, get it back to feeding well, and get it back to producing the quantity and the quality that we look for in our garden. Yes. Wow. If you have any other questions,